Business. Biz. Come say hello to the people. Oh, yeah, those are lovely peoples. And this peoples, and look at this buddy who's like, ah, oh, I want some cuddles. I want cuddles, daddy. And the business is like, I'm up all in it. And the buddy's like, what about my love? And then Callie's like, I'm just chilling. And then Wally's like, I want out. But buddies, I don't, oh, buddy, you get so much love. Let me just give, let me just give business a cuddles. Look, look at this business boy. Let me business. No. Yeah. Biz, biz, give me kisses, give me kisses. Buddy, just chill. You'll get your lovings. The needy boy. I totally get it though, bud. Yo, everybody. Uh, Live from the hills of Beverly Shire, 90210, Bobby Billions in the hizzle. On the ones, touching down on the ones. Uh, One or two, but I haven't bought a two yet. Don't know how to mix. Only fader I've got is uh, volume control. Yes, there's a business boy. It's a beautiful day in the hills of Beverly Shires. Right now. Uh, This is what it looks like. Outside. Oh, look at that. Oh, I've got a room full of dogs. And a head full of... Oh, what's going on? What's going on? Hi, Katie, Alan, Russell. Love to you, darling. Um, young Katie there. Learning to feel secure in a mad world. Katie, everybody is. Everybody's learning to feel secure in a mad world. Hey, do you know what? We all need a bit more water. Hydrate, everybody. Don't let me keep you up either. Food, um, sleep is our friend. Water is our friend. We need a bit of that. We need water and we need sleep. And we also need... A bit of this. Gonna take the plunge Do something special and heroic I'm gonna ask the girl I hope I don't blow it I got my pecker robe and a polo miss Gonna dance like this Learning all the words to her favorite songs They're the greatest hits and then they go like this Yes, Jason I just woke up Fucking mental Tells me Friends, they'd only put me down. She's out of my league, they say, but the league is upside down. I got a tight t shirt and my hair's all slick, and I might be young, but I could dance like this. And then all the words to her favorite songs, they're the greatest hits, and then it just like this. Roman and my bow lowman's gonna strike a pose and keep it just like this. Boy, now with a bit of know how, and I know now, know now, I exist. That's the last song that I wrote. Of the 25 songs or 27 songs, 28, I don't know. Jimmy Bullard, mate. You up for a chat, Jimmy? 
You don't have to be up for a chat, Jimmy. Go live. If you're up for it, Jimmy, or if you're otherwise, we can do it. Oh, there we go. All right, Sam. Oi, oi. Oi, oi. How are you, my boy? I'm good. Let me ask you this. Um, you have a pub, which is a burgeoning business for you. Yes, and you yes. are you are keeping the community to go um, through You're... company and alcohol and all that good stuff. You need people Ooh. to man the pot and look after you. Hello there, darling. Hello, beautiful. Say hello, that's baby. Cool. That's my little one. Say hello. Hi, darling. I'm I'm Bobby Billions. That's Mr. Bobby Billions. Billions. He's a bit of a boat, Randy. You know what I mean? Jim. Go on, mate. So, you need people to look after your pub, right? Yeah, I, to be honest, Rob, right, I've had this pub 10 years. It's so, like, I've got so much passion in it. My dad has been a publican all his life, and we have publicans living in the pub. And as you know, a pub is, like, been such a dying trade, even before COVID, you know. There were so many pubs on their ass. excuse me, French. Um, and, you know, local communities come together with really, like, I've just got in. I've just got him. What is it? It's 11 o'clock. Just trying to get it revamped back up and running. You know, three, four months, our doors have been shut. And, you know, it's going to be fantastic. I'll tell you what it is, Rob, as well. We get, it's a real family-orientated pub with a lot of old-school people in there. You know, a lot of lonely um, gentlemen. They wouldn't even mind me saying that. Don't have a lot of time to spend with anyone. So they come in, have a pint, and that's a lot of their life. So we miss that trade a load. So I can't wait for Saturday to be open. I really can't. And okay. see all my so, punters. A, a big shout out. What do you need people to know? What do you need people to do if just, they want to just, come? To just you? support your local community and your local pubs. Not, not mine. I'm not shouting on, you know, my pub. I'm just saying... Everyone listening to this, everyone here, just go and support your local pub community. And, and especially for the older generation, I think it's massive, you know, especially British pub, you know, it's part of our culture. I agree. I spent my first five years, the first five years of my life was spent in the Red Lion pub in Burnley, nice. in stoke nice, on nice, nice. So I was born into a, I would say, publican family for the first five yeah. years of my life. But I've seen your pub. It's got a yeah. great garden. It looks, Thanks, it's mate. Like, it, it looks, it's like a proper, beautiful, traditional. Uh, Rob, I'm so dare, proud of dare it. Dare I say, dare I say, upmarket. Yeah, it, I'll tell you what, Rob. It's, it, it's an old, grade two listed building. See, I'm quite a tradition, traditionalist as well, like my old man. And I, it's the best thing I've ever bought. People say to me, what's the best thing you bought? You know, this is a bit of a petrol head, cars, this and that. No, no, no. My pub is the best thing I've ever bought. I absolutely love it. So, you know, I'm buzzing that we're back open. Social distance, obviously, involved. But anyway, enough about me, enough about the pub. How comes I'm seeing you on here all the time? What's the script? Uh, the script is this. You just love it, don't you? Is this, is this a bit of relief for you when you come on here? Well, you know, what... If if you were left to your own devices, Jim, what would yeah. you need to, you know, like your talents are, you are gifted with hand-eye coordinate, coordination and you love sport. Now, yeah. if you took that away from you, you, were, you, you didn't have an ability to go golfing or didn't have an ability to go fishing, you wouldn't feel that great, would you? No. Right, okay. Okay. So my thing is, you know, Hello, I'm an entertainer. Hello. 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 Hello, Ansem. I'm an entertainer. Yeah. So, you know, it, here I am doing what yeah, I Yeah, I got do you, anyway. mate. I got you. So it's a little, yeah, it's what you need to do, but it just happens, don't it? It's what you need to do. And you love a you, little sing-along and all that. Um, do you do many lives? Do you do any of this stuff? To be honest, right, when I see it on my timeline come through, I'll just go random. Right? I'll, this is proper random for me. I'll see you every now and then at Bosch, and I'll see Red Red Nat, Red Dog Bosch, and I'll just see ran and I'm just random, mate. Some of them don't even know I follow. I just get on it and just follow them because I fo you and Goldstein were killing me the other night. That's the other thing. I was going on it and you were killing me. He's cracking oh. with his big lardy out and you with the chain mail on. I'm going, what's happening in here? Well... I've got to say, big fan of the magic sponge, which is in your. Oh, um, thanks, Rob. It's uh, in it, it's in your past now. That's a long time ago, isn't it? 
four years we started. I was a bit, you, I think I was ahead of the game too much, really. I think four, four or five years ago we started the sponge, you know, and all these um, other people, you know, now the podcast is the done thing, you know, and I really miss the sponge. I wish it was still going and Rob Beckett, obviously he's out doing things, but I want to bring the sponge back. I'm, I'm trying yeah. to look for another, another presenter, so I want to bring the sponge back. I really do. Are you, are you, um, are you looking hard enough? No, good question. No, I'm not. I've had so here's, much on at the minute. Here's the thing, Jim. You're really effing good at it. And it takes up not a lot of your time. And you'll have fun doing it. I think you should be doing one. If you can find time to do it, you should do it. Yeah. Thanks, son. Thank you. And you've... Since I've met you, it's strange Instagram, isn't it? Because obviously I've been a massive fan, and I say I don't want to sound eggy for the people listening. I've been a massive fan of yours forever. Do you know what I mean? And my oh, mum bless. once brought me, my, my, my mum once brought me your swing DVD when you was out. What was it? The Palladium. You done your swing? Where was uh, it when you done your swing, P? The Albert Hall. Yeah, fantastic. I've been a fan of yours since back in the day. Do you get what I mean? I really have. So, and then it's a bit weird, like. Me following you. Instagram's a powerful thing, Rob, isn't it? Do you get what I mean? Without Instagram, I don't think we'd have been having this chat, obviously. So, you know, I, it, it I love is. Instagram. I do too. Social media has a lot and lot a lot of negatives, but because of social media, I've been able to get in touch with people that I wouldn't normally be able to get in touch with. Like I had a yeah. forty five minute chat with Tubes yesterday. Oh, did ya? I played golf with yeah. him the other day and ironed him clean out. <laughs> <laughs> he said he said you were he said you were unbelievable. Do you know when, do you know what put do you know what putter I've got? You haven't got the arm lock. I haven't got the arm lock, no. But I've got, got a putter that actually does what it says it does, right? The lab L A B putter. Oh, and do you know what? It refuses to go offline. It just it just finds itself back at and that, it finds is it, itself back at Is it the one with the red off. dot? Is it the one with the red dot on top of the the shaft? No? Do you know what I mean? The top of the no, no? It, it's a really unusual kind of like crap UFO nineteen seventies design. But it's it going the other Rob? Does it yeah, do, it, that's it all goes, you need it to work. Do you get what I mean? So I, I looped up your arm lock you yeah. got something that goes up here like that and then you do that. Yeah. 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 What are you playing is... off right now? Get on this, right? Golf is one amazing sport. It's like, it isn't necessarily the harder you work, the more you work, the better you get, as you will know. You know what I mean? You can go down the wrong road with golf. I I've never had a lesson in my life, really, and I've sort of learned it all on my own mind, and I'm really intrigued in the golf swing. I love the mechanics about it. I love what it's about. So I'm off. I don't even know why I went off on that one. But I shot, get on this, I, I was 10 under for the last 27 holes I've played. Serious. Really? 10 under for the last 27 years. I've been on fire, mate. But then I've had three months off, so I went back and all that thinking of what I'm doing wrong. But the biggest, any golfers listening, this biggest tip I can give you, Rob. What are you off, Rob? 12. Yeah. Is understand your own game. As soon as you understand what you're good at and what you're weak at, that's when your golf game will go through the roof. You know, you get so many coaches telling you this and telling you that, and it might not be ideal for you. I read something. Tiger Woods' biggest strength was to um, discard things. Sean Foley, his coach, said, Tiger Woods, I could give him 100 things, he'd discard 99 of them, but he'd keep that one gem and he knew it'd work for him. Which I just thought, when he said that, I thought, wow, that's a powerful comment, that. You know, we all get given a load of crap in life, don't we? And it's like, you can fill your head you know so what, much. I, okay, do you, know what I, do you know what I do, right? Well, I can't Go get, on. I can't figure out how to make my brain do it. Go on, you Goes out, it. comes down, right? Yeah, Let's yeah. Go. Then the legs go. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not as dramatic as that. <laughs> Sorry, goes, Rob. I know you're... Are you being serious? <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, listen, Jim. It's not as dramatic as that. It's just a split oh, right. second. You're exaggerated. I'm hey. exaggerated. 
goes back. Sorry. Down, and then and then I'm sort of hit. You know, you know, it's all from the legs, right? It's all from the legs. Right? Yeah. Do you, what's your bad shot? Is it? A, are you right-handed? Yeah, I'm right-handed. Yeah. Did that come across reversal on my phone. Sorry. So, you, is your bad miss? Do you miss it right? Do you miss it right? A lot of shots. Uh, what, not, have you got a miss that you miss, or do you miss both ways, or what? I miss. I miss both ways, which is not that important. What is important? What is important is this. I've got a 300-yard drive in me. Right. So you've got plenty of power, but, plenty of speed. But I can't control when that is or isn't. <laughs> right. Can I just... Can I just... It's right, either, it's, okay. okay, one second. It's either 300 yards or 250. Okay. But you know when you said to me, right or left isn't very important? Yeah. I think in golf, right? If you could make just the right miss, not left or right. Soon, if you're missing both ways, I think it's a catastrophe. If you're missing miss one way, you miss left. Okay, then I'll try and fix everything so you miss right. I know it sounds obvious, but if you're missing both ways, it's, a, it's an absolute disaster because you got a, they call it the two-way missing golf, and then it's, you're in the middle of no man's land. If, you can, if you're missing it one way all the time, it's an easy fix because you bring it back this way. Whatever that fix is, you can bring it back. The two-way miss is a disaster, Rob, trust me. And that's why I always try and hit one way. I'll tell you a great drill for you, Rob. If you want to get better, I know you think I'm probably a bit of a weirdo, right? It's put You've got your ball, put a stick in front of your target line, say three, four yards in front of your ball, straight down your target line, whatever that may be, a tree, a flag, whatever, right? And are you a draw do you like to draw it or fade it? I just I just hit it very straight. But just bear with me, Rob, why do you have to come? Okay, uh, okay. It's what do you like? Whatever I goes that draw. Way. So you want to start it right and draw it back. Yeah. Yeah. You're start it, it, right and draw. Mine goes. Mine goes left and fades back. Yours goes left and fades back. So it's a fade shot. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That stick in front of you. Try and get every shot starting left of that. So your start line's good, and try and get it to move back right. Once you get it starting left of your target, nine times out of ten or ninety-nine times out of hundred, you're onto a winner because you can start your line. You start lining goals very and that's important. Your target. You can use it exactly right, perfect. You can use a tree, a bottle, a big thick thing in front of you, and then as soon as you get a started left, great. Then you work on bringing it back. But if you work it two ways, it's very hard to work with. So work on one shot, one shape. And then work it back round a tree or a bottle or a stick or an umbrella, whatever that is. So I, it's a I great tip. That because I'm going to play today. So, okay. uh, but I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm playing. Um, it's a pitch and put. Uh, where are you in the world? That's the other thing I was trying LA. to work out. LA. LA. Beautiful. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's great. But the pitch and put is a good pitch and put. It's a good. It's a good quality pitch and put. Split, so I yeah. played. Uh, I played there Friday night, and I hit eight out of nine greens. Decent. Like, so, how long have you been playing golf for properly? Because you're bang on it in a minute, isn't you? Oh, yeah, okay. So, from 14 years old to 16 year old. Then I joined Take That, no golf. Yeah. 2006, I played golf all year, and then I gave up because I hated myself. And then I picked it up. Eight months ago. Love, wow. You've got a good iron hand then, haven't you? Because um, you're a tidy well, footballer as well, aren't you? To be fair, oh, you, oh, do you know what I mean? Not not too bad. I, I mean, you know, they put me at left back so I wouldn't do any damage. Yeah, but you, you, you can play, can't you? You know when people move and you just go, oh, you can't play, but you can play. Do you know what I mean? Some yeah, people I've, just can't move well, can I've they? I've done not a bit. How's your, um, how's your body feeling? If I don't do too much, the problem is, look, is this? I'm trying to show my knee. See my oh. knee? Yeah. See that? Wow. I done wow. a cruise shirt when I was at Fulham. I wrecked it, and I didn't think I'd play again. To be honest, Rob, I got like my knee has never been the same since my first injury. And I went back in the Premier League and got called up for England after my knee injury. And I always played. I can tell people now, but I was always scared of it. 
when I had my injury, I was always, I'd never let on. It was only me and my family knew, but I was always scared of it. I wasn't the same player mentally as I was, but I went back physically and become better, if that makes sense. Do you get what I mean? I sort of, I just become a better player. I knew what I couldn't get away with. I took less risk on my leg and then that just, my football went through the roof. But I was, I was weaker in other ways. Like if I went into a challenge, I'd try and ride that challenge. I wouldn't be as aggressive in the challenge. I did lose, like, I did lose my bottle a little bit between me and, like, well, everyone knows. Now, but but, you, but you, you lost your bottle, but you gained what? I gained, I gained in knowledge. When I watched it, I was out for 18 months. I really watched football quite closely and I knew there was other ways around. So I, I gained, I knew I'd have to shift the ball before someone come near me. I'd shift it quickly and I'd try and blindside them more. And I'd more, it's more like cat and mouse in do you get what I mean? I was more cat and mousey. I, if you watch me closely, very rarely I used to like to be up against people. I, I didn't like to be felt. I didn't like to have people come close to me. I'd get rid of it quickly. I'd, I'd one to it. I'd flick it around corners quicker. You know, I was more of a nick. I was an interceptor. I'd become an interceptor. Do you know what I mean? I sort of... Do you, do you think that if your name was Jimmy Bellardio... Yeah. People would, have, yeah. people would have treated you a bit differently. Yeah, well, who knows, Rob? Do you know what I mean? Who knows, son? But I love because, my name. Because it, it, seems, it seems to me that you were gifted with an incredible amount of skill. Yeah. But you sort of had a personality that typically, like your personality went beyond you even while you were playing. People knew about Jimmy Bullard's personality. It was very British, very very funny do you think do you think in any way I'm not assuming that it did but do you think that that may have detracted I get asked that a lot you know I get asked that a lot from like real football fans that sort of knew my career which you obviously you've seen me and you do know all the questions you've asked there is bang on yeah I do in a way but that naturalness just come out you know when I played football I didn't see it as football, you know, I, I didn't just see it as football, I see it as entertainment. I was a fan myself. I, every time I went into a football ground, I was like, shit, like, there's fans here, like, they're coming to watch me. Like, uh, I was overwhelmed by not just the football, I was overwhelmed by the actual, the whole thing. Just driving into the grounds. I remember getting off the coach at Anfield for Wigan and walking into the ground because I wanted to walk into the ground. I wanted to like soak up the whole lot and people thought I was a weirdo. I was like, no, 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 you don't understand. This might not happen again. I'm playing at Anfield. Like, you're not going to take this whole experience away from me. Do you get what I mean? This, and my mum used to always say to me, but she used to go, Jim, remember where you are. Remember where you are. And it was the, back in the day when a lot of people was wearing headphones and, like, almost falling asleep driving in and, like, not soaking it all in. And I was not one of them. I was, like, as we was, like, coming into the ground. Do you get what I'm saying? I, I, I'm, I'm going to soak all this in. I'm going to be a sponge. This is... Yeah, this, this is, is my... It's not going to pass me by. Yeah, this... this I, you know I, I, mean? think, I think people are... Um, it's a very... It's a very... Uh, very thin line that you walk as somebody with personality in the game that you were in. Because, you know, as much as people want personality from their footballers, they also are the people that get hammered the most. Yeah. You managed, you managed to walk the thin line with having personality and not, be, not succumbing to people trying to hammer you am i right or am i wrong yeah yeah i think i managed that without really knowing that i i, I managed it in a yeah you are yeah 100 percent. you manage it without man yeah i did manage that and i used to be the joke i used to be this big character you know i used to go over take all the set pieces and play with the fans you know i was going over taking corners and then like the fans would be up and i'd be there and if they're away fans give me stick i'd swear back at them and now i'll be that cheeky chap and sort of play that cat and mouse with fans you know yeah. but i love that i, I remember that. this at all yeah do you know what i mean like <laughs> <laughs> But that's also because of my attention-seeking. I'm quite, you know, I think 
you know, very similar to you, a big attention seek. If we strip it back, we love entertaining, right? I love, it ain't just about football. I love being watched by people. You know, if I'm on a snooker table, I love people watching. If I'm, if there's eight of us around the table, I want to be that person holding that story. I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love listening to other people's, but I'm, I'm, that, I'm, I'm a massive attention seeker, which I've only, the last 10 years really See, sort of... Here's the thing about the word attention seeker. Okay, yeah, I get that. But the connotations of those those words attention seeker are quite negative, you know. The truth of the matter is one of your talents is to make people feel good. Mm. And you like making people feel good because that is one of the things that is in your locker. And when you make people feel good, you feel good. So but why why is it a negative if I'm a attention seeker? Let me ask you that question. Well, well, there's there's never there's never a sentence when people talking about somebody where they go, I love him. He's an attention seeker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do, do you see what I'm saying? It's like nobody ever goes. <laughs> he's just a just a fucking attention. Oh, excuse my language. He's just yeah. an attention seeker. That fellow. I I, I do know. Yeah, it's an I don't know what you mean. It's but it's you know you and I have got that sort of thing where it's yeah. I did a thing once when I was a kid that made people go, <laughs> and that feels nice. Yeah. And I've managed to make a job out of that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's the skill that I've got in my locker. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily call it attention seeking. I just think yeah. it's a skill. How's soccer AM? You enjoying it? We are, mate. I love it. I love it. I managed the year before they asked me to go back on. I was doing a little leverage, like a little non-league piece managing, ran like a little local club. I absolutely loved it. And then Soccer AM Fenners, who does Soccer AM, asked me, do you want to present? And I was like, don't know, mate. Never done this before. He chucked me in at the deep end. You sure? And he went, you'll be all right. We so he's, look, listen, he... He's been brilliant for me, and that show has been fantastic. I've always loved that show. And to actually go Saturday morning, and it gives me, it's similar. To, I think, Rob, we've, it's the closest thing to playing football I could do because it's similar times. It's Saturday mornings. It, it, it keeps me out of trouble in a weird way. You know, it gives me something to look forward to at weekends, and I love, I love looking forward to that at weekends. It gives me my, a little Pres pressure's on as well. Little, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you get it, yeah. when you get in the morning, people don't understand that. It's like, oh, cameras, oh, you get a bit jittery, didn't you? And go, yeah, 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 the old buzz is back. Do you get what I mean? No matter how you play yeah. pool, it's on. Do you get what I mean? I don't care who you are, yeah. it is on. Do you get what I mean? Um, you keeps, know all about it keeps that, you don't you? You know all it about keeps that. You yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, you, you know, you've got to up your game. But you, and feel, be, you I, feel that when you go and, and I've seen your, I've seen all your stuff when you're backstage, you, you're like, you get proper anxious, don't you? You get proper on it, don't you? Uh, Is anxious the right word? Nervous? What, what do you call it? Well, look, I, I see it like this. <laughs> you, I see it like, <laughs> you went, where do I start? Uh, mate. Okay. So I have a re very weird relationship with, with, with live shows. Most of the time, I get on stage and Robbie Williams turns up. So are you scared that he ain't gonna? Sometimes he doesn't and I have to do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. That's the best way of putting it. Yeah. Do, do, do you, I, I think I, you'll I, understand I do. What... I think you're... Your scale obviously is grander, and you you're holding a lot more, and there's a lot more pressures on you being that lone figure. I really do, obviously, but I know I can I can relate. I can relate, not on your scale, but I can relate. I suppose your scale is the reason why the scale becomes bigger. <laughs> you no, well, but if you think it, but think about it. If you think about <laughs> yeah, it, you, the, the, the scale isn't bigger. The live show, I've got more faces staring at me actual live faces but you've actually got more people staring at you in their living rooms so the scale is i don't yeah. know roughly the same. I, I get but what I you mean there but i also have a person to fall back on and i have a producer in the ear and i have people you know fenners is very good at picking up and he knows when i'm whoa 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 whoa, whoa and bullard's absolutely struggling i've got nothing it's a morning show as well rob i'm not a really morning person like come 11 o'clock at night i'm 10 times better now than 11 o'clock in the morning 
I am, and a lot yeah. of people like that. And some days I go in and I'm on point and I know when I'm flying, it's just a rehearsal, bang, 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 bullards. Or the, the bulldogs turn up, as I like to call it. And then when Jimmy Bullard's on go. his own, when Jimmy Bullard's on his own, I've got nothing. That's a wild thing. Nothing, mate. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. vulnerable. Vulnerable yeah, stuff. Vulnerable, stuff. I, yeah. I, remember, I remember Tony Adams like telling me this story about sometimes on the pitch, there's nowhere to hide. And it was like, mm. there's no, you know, it's like if you're not on it or you've had a drink or whatever, there's nowhere to hide. And I was thinking, yeah, you should try being one person in front of 135,000 people and see how that feels. Yeah. But it, in that weird, yeah. though, sorry to go on about me again, I've never felt like that in football. Weird. <clears throat> I never felt that in football. <laughs> My nerves wasn't half as bad as it is when I'm going to do soccer. I am. I don't know. I don't know whether it faded off or it was at the start, but it definitely towards like mid and end career. No way. It wasn't like that at all. Weird, isn't it? I, I think because I had another 12, 14, 15 players there, and then football is a team sport, and you do feel like you can rest on the others a little bit. You know what I mean? Did you feel a little bit easier when? Yeah, here's one for you. Did you feel a little bit easier when you did that? Yeah. So you, at, do you know what that thing so you were you talking about it. going to Liverpool and taking it all in? When I rejoined with Take That, I I could be on stage at Wembley Stadium, and I've got four other lads that allowed me just to take a step back and look at it. Yeah, look at it all and soak it all in, see all those faces, and feel what it means. Because when it's just you and you're on your Jack Jones. You, you, your yeah. mind, your, your mind's always seven seconds in front of you. What mm. am I going to do? How am I going to look? What's my face going to do? How am I going to sing this? Am I in key? Da 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 da. Movement, movement, joke, gag, funny. Da da da. Yeah. You oh, move you know, well, though, boy, didn't you? You slick. Honestly, no, I'm not. <laughs> nah, you got slick, boy. <laughs> well, well, listen. But the, the reason I'm saying that is, when I am intake that, when I rejoin. I get to soak it all in and feel what it feels like to be in the position that, you know, I'm in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So are you doing Soccer AM by Zoom? We're doing it indoors, mate. Look, there's my little setup there. Look, I'll show you my setup. There's my setup. There's all the computer stuff. This is my little chair, and I just sit in here and get my job done. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's just a random little setup. Yeah, I have I haven't, um, I haven't had the chance to see it because I'm in LA. So what is it? It's just just indoors, just just indoors, and yeah, with Fenner sits it indoors. I'll do it indoors, and then the two punters do it. We had Tony Bell, you and oh my god, who did we have on last time? This is embarrassing. And um, Micah, Micah Richards on. We had them two on last time, so that was nice. No, but it's good. We should be back in a studio soon. You know what I mean? COVID's dropping slowly, slowly. It's getting better and better. What's it like over there with COVID and stuff? All right. Well, COVID and what should be done about it, they were two weeks ahead of the UK. Right. So, you know, the, the shutdown happened like that. And I'm just watching news articles about the UK going... They don't know what's about to happen, so okay. they're they're on top. Unfortunately, they're reversing a lot of decisions to open places. So yeah, it's happening here. I think it, it, it's going a bit backwards. Anyway, that's bad news. Let me ask you this: You were doing management before Soccer AM, yeah? For what team? Leverid. Leverid. Um... Football club, which is Rhyme and Prem, which is two under the conference. Did you enjoy it? Oh, mate. It's, it's like, it was so good. It was like wicked. Absolutely loved it. Like, I'd, were you, I'd, were, I'd, are, you cut, are you cut out for that kind of job? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I've got, yeah, I've just got too much to give. I just know I have. I've got too much. I know, I don't care if people say he's playing his own trumpet. I've just got too I, much. I know. I fucking, I love that. Because people go, people say, 
Oh, he's a joker. There's that little, let's touch on a little bit eh, what you said on earlier. They go, oh, he's a joker. It take a strong... Listen, I've gone down another route now. I know it'll take a strong chairman for me to get in front of and have a chat to. I, know, I understand the route I've taken. I'm a bit of a wild character. It comes across like that. But trust me, if I was in front of a chairman and a board of directors and they just listen to me and they give me my Jimmy Bullard... I wouldn't have achieved what I achieved in the game if I was just a fool and a joker. You can't blag 15 years of professional football. So once I sit and show them and the way I want to play and like what I've got to give, i just got too much and I want to do it one day and I know I have. And my, my opinions are so strong, I couldn't even be assistant. Okay, so let me, let me ask you this, this, this question. Are you a aloof manager or are you an arm around the player manager? I am. I can be very aloof. I can be very. Um, if I, I think I'm both. I think I'm both. I think I got both in a locker. I can be very to the point, and I understand. I understand. I, I understand people management. I, I, I really think that's one of my strong points. I, I can. I'm really good at that. I understand. Uh, I, I really feel it. I feel it. I just feel it. I know when someone's not feeling it. I know when they give me the cold shoulder straight off the bat. If I know someone, I know. I know. Well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this question. You were there is a, there is a sort of culture in football that only footballers kind of understand, and outside of that, people would be like. What is that? So the banter that you have between you mm. as footballers can be yeah. very, very kind of like harsh, but you understand what it is. You understand the culture. Do you think that sort of culture that you had between you all has moved on and, and players are more kind of more sensitive and more mollycoddled? And would you sort of employ that kind of banter as a manager? To answer, yes, definitely moved on. It's definitely got, you know, when I was 19, 20, it was harsh as anything. But I think that's just the world in general, not just football. I really think it's got like that. Um, and no, my banter, no. I'm totally different. If I was managing, even at Leverhead, when I was managing, totally different person. Didn't really do you, have... Do you think... Because, like, what, what year did you turn professional? I was 19, so I'm crap at doing the years. But I am 19, oh, my, 21, 22 years ago. 22 years ago. So, yeah, 98. Do you think that the top school that you were... You embarked your career on with top professionals helped or hindered and do you or do you not wish it was still the same way now wow crunch questions very hard to sometimes answer them because well, you don't have to. no 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 i want to answer them and i'll answer any question anyone gives me especially coming from mr williams but it's very hard like what to ask the first one again okay so the sensibilities of footballers have changed from when yeah. you first became a professional. When you became a professional, it was very much sink or swim, right? You're yeah. thrown in with the big boys. You're thrown in with the experience that come from a decade before you, when the boozing was the culture, and it was a real man's game, right? Yeah. From yeah. what I understand as an outsider, the, the game has changed. It's still a man's game, but it's a different man's game. Yeah. Do you think it was better then than it is now? Better? Not sure. It was a tougher, what you're saying, I agree. It was a man, it was Rory, you know, it was very hard as a youngster coming in. It was very scary, it was intimidating. But yeah. I, honest, I honestly feel in the, the modern game, it's more difficult. I think it's and it and it's worldwide. It's you know the top flight is more world elite. When I was playing, you know, you had the odd foreign player coming in. It is very British, so we didn't have the whole world we was picking from like now. And like anything, Rob, I think football has just gone pure athlete. Athlete, it's gone so athletic. You watch the players; they're twice as quick. I think everything moves on. 
so to answer your question, I think it's tougher now to crack it. I think it's tougher now. But in a weird way, it was hardier back then. So you have, you have it in a nutshell. It's hardier. It's more of a, like a, um, more of an old fashioned. It was, uh, you know, it was, it, it was rawer. It was raw. It was in a raw state back then. You know, players was doing most outrageous things. We've done stuff like today. It was like, you, would, you wouldn't be able to do it. You wouldn't be able to do Jim, it. You'd get... Jim, Jim, I was in Take That, right? <laughs> I was in Take That. And we were lily white, right? We were lily white. I was in clubs taking ecstasy and doing speed and dancing all night. Whilst... A million love songs was out there on the radio. <laughs> that, 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 that just couldn't happen now. You know, that no. just couldn't happen. In it, so let me, let me, let me ask you, this. I'd love to do this again with you, by the way. So give me your, get, DM me, give me your number. Of course. What do you mean, my number? Okay. My phone number? Yes. Yeah, yeah. you've got my phone number, I'm sure. Okay, I'll give you it again. Yes, I think I left it last time, but I'll do it. It's no drama. Okay. So, um, listen, last question. Go on, mate. This is like therapy. Your experience in your football career, right? Yeah. Yep. One being uh, as horrendous as it can be, 10 being orgasmic, rate your experience overall for your whole career? What? My whole career? What did I think of my whole career? Yes. Oh, mate, that's like orgasmic, uh, orgasmatronophon. Like... Do you think, do you think, do you think uh, most... No, you don't really, Rob, Rob, Rob. I mean, I was the person. You know, a lot of people growing up in school, and you hear this quite a lot, I want to be a footballer, I want to be a footballer. And you hear your teachers go, no, no, no. I was that fan all the way up to 19 where, and all of a sudden my dreams disappeared. And if it wasn't for my mum and especially my dad with that full belief in me, I would never have got there. And then all of a sudden, 1920, when it's just all of a sudden gone, that last little grab, West Ham come calling and say, do you want to try? And guess what? I'm a West Ham fan. This Roy the Rovers, my career. Roy the Rovers, like if you want to write how, and you call it luck, but there were times in my career where I had to make my own luck and make my own fights and make my own, and play. And, and I've had so many weird moments where it's like all of a sudden come to halfway. I remember talking in the mirror at Peterborough away, Peterborough United, and thinking, Jim, if I don't produce in this second half, this manager's going to lose faith in me. Barry Fry's going to lose faith in me. I'm not going to play next game. And I know it's down with spiral. Boom, produced in a moment. Set a goal up, score a goal. Bang, I'm back on top of the world and away I go. And then from them moments, I just went up and up and up. Mark, to answer your question, Rob, I still can't believe now. I still celebrate that I was a football player now. See, like, what, what, I don't, what I don't understand when footballers talk... A lot of the time, they'll say, "Yeah, I was I was very lucky there, da da da," and I was, and I got I got a bit of luck and da da da. What I don't understand is where's where's the luck? Because luck isn't kicking the ball. You're kicking- no lucky. He, yeah, but here's the luck. Here's the luck. I was playing for Grays in the North Fleet. Not every time a scout comes to watch you in them terraces. Not every time Roger Cross was the scout that scouted me for West Ham United. He come to know, I know, he come to two games to watch me. Now, out of ten games of them two games, he come to watch me. I scored in them two games that he watched me. Only two. Now, he could have come the other two when I didn't play that well. Now, that's what I call a little bit of luck in your favour. That's only the luck. The little bit of timing, he comes to watch me... You know, everyone could have it. He could have watched my two shit performances and gone, mm, not for me. And then my, my worst performances, but he didn't. He come on the best two. But then here comes no luck because you need your bit of luck. Now here comes the real cherry. Now I've got to take it. I'm three weeks at West Ham on trial. Now it's in my court. The ball's in my court. It's whatever I do with it. I've got to smash it now. And then turning up at Chadwell Leaf on my first day and having a one-on-one with Frank Lampard was like, 
shit, this is the real, this is the real McCoy. But from that day, I, that's when I grabbed it. So the luck was there. I had my luck, but then I had to grab it. And that's what I've done. I knew, I knew I could do it. I knew. Do you think, do you think that you, because of your stop start and then sort of go backwards and then come all the way up, do you think because that was the plan, that was the trajectory of your career, you got to enjoy it more and understand what it is because you were close to being something completely else. Absolutely. And more yeah. cherish it more when you do achieve something. Realize. Jim, 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 check this out. Can, we, can you imagine if we hadn't got that look? <laughs> yeah. What? You know? <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah. I always think about that. I always imagine. I always, but then I always think, I'm going a bit deep here, but I always think I will always be all right. I'll always yeah, be all right. Yeah. I always yeah, think too. I'll always be all right. That, honestly, I've always felt that. I don't know what it is. Uh, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Right, a listen. It's a lovely speaking to you, Robbie, honestly. I loved deep it. Chat. Loved deep it, chat. Loved it, mate. Yeah. Got loads more questions for another time. Yeah, well, Rob, lovely to speak to you finally. And pl honestly, can we get a game of golf, please? I'd love to have a uh, yeah? Mate, it is on. When I'm and in I know the you're UK, over there. Sweet, mate. I'm Give me a UK, tingle, yeah? It's on. All right. Robbie, lovely to speak to you, mate. Big, big look, look mate. You take care. Yeah. Bye, bye, bud. Bye. Jimmy Bullard there with the chats. Going deep with Jimmy. On some questions there. Would have loved for that to carry on. To think, I'm all right at that stuff, aren't I? Asking the questions and that. But I think that I've got to be interested with the person that I'm chatting to. <laughs> and of course, I'm mega interested in Jimmy. What a footballer and what a personality. That sort of leads to many chat, chat avenue. Other people, you can fall down a chat cul-de-sac. We'll go, there's nothing here. There's nothing here for me other than a round circle and having to turn back. Love that. Um, so, Bobby Billions, live from the hills of Beverly Shire, 90210, with Das Chats. Robbie, lots of bullies in here tonight, says uh, Orlov H. And oh, that's sad. Uh... Hey, Robbie in Queensland, Australia. Hey, Nat, these comments have been toxic tonight. Oh, well, I'll go on a, go on a banning spree. Um, but I enjoyed my chat with Jimmy. Uh, Mia Jess Jones says, a chat with Frank Lampard, maybe. Yeah, that would be cool, too. I'd like to chat with Frank Lampard about his work ethic because I believe his work ethic separated him and put him in a different class. And um, I don't really have that work ethic. I have drive. I have complete and utter burning ambition and complete and utter drive. <sighs> but I don't think I'd be the kind of person that's staying behind after training to hit 25 balls into a net from free kicks. I think I'd be like, mm -hmm. I want to be that guy, but I'm going home now. You and Jimmy should get the magic sponge back together, says Danny J. Bishop. That'd be interesting. Chat with Paul Merson. Paul Merson's a great chat. Obviously, me and Merce, the magic man, have got um, things in common. Addictive personalities, uh, whilst maintaining a high level of a professional career. Maybe a chat with Gordon Ramsay, says Andy Knight. Yeah, Gordon's, Gordon's a great, Gordon's a great personality. And uh, what he's achieved and how he's achieved it would be very, very interesting. How's the golfing going, says Martin Jessup. I played a couple of rounds this week on pitch and puts. Three over. Yeah, three over. Not bad. Uh, chat with Robert Lewandowski, the best striker nowadays. Yeah, he is. Don't know much about him other than he's Polish 
and he scores when he likes. <laughs> Roy Keane. Roy Keane would be fascinating, wouldn't it, Patrick? That'd be great. You uh, have your own chat show. Yeah, get GB on one night. Yeah, I could do. Get a chat with Ozzy. When's the next soccer aid, says Gav Mulligan. Don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't have a crystal ball. Um, wish, wish I did. Oh my God, Ozzy would be cool. Yeah, he would. Get Rory McIlroy on for a chat. That would be ideal. Yeah, I, I love all of these suggestions. Jurgen Klopp. Absolutely love Jurgen Klopp. Somebody's just said. Okay. Bobby Billions, live from the hills of Beverly Shire, 90210. I think I have been keeping up with the comments. Well, let's have a bit of this. I think it's important right now. Be kind. Be kind. Forgive me space. Forgive me space. Let this be. Let this be. A peaceful place. Be kind. Or blow away. I'm going through. Awkward face, a face called light, a face called light. It's not the rebels that cause the troubles, it's the troubles that cause the rebels to do what they do. This could be the theme tune to my talk show. Oh, I do but do it Go be mad. Go be mad. But on your own time, before you came, I was doing fine. In this face called life. In this face called life. Okay, live from the hills of Beverly Shire, 90210. I've been Bobby Billions. It is four o'clock. The kids are out of school. Better go and give them a love and be daddy for a little while. Uh, pleasure checking in with you. We had a lovely chat with the Mandem. Mandem. Some people are calling Jimmy, oi, oi, Bully Bullard. Now, I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to interview people and then give them their own catchphrase. Yeah. So some people are calling Jimmy. I know life's unfair, but this is ridiculous, son, Bullard. There you go. Okay. Do you need a catchphrase? I'm your man. Bobby Binions on the Wheel of Steel. It's been real. That was then. This is now. <laughs>